Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct and interpret a bivariate correlation. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you could find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. Correlations are a great way for us to understand if two variables have a relationship with one another. And in particular, I'm going to cover three types of correlations here, a Pearson correlation, a Spearman correlation, and a Kendall's tau b correlation. And we'll talk about when each of those are more or less appropriate. To run our first correlation analysis, I'm going to look at two linear and continuous variables. In particular, I'm going to look at age, which is just how old someone is. And I'm going to look at this variable down here called average opinion. This is the average of a number of other variables that ask people to respond about their opinion towards YouTube. So we're going to start simple and we're just going to correlate average opinion with age. To run a bivariate correlation, we say analyze, correlate, bivariate. So I'm going to include these two variables. I'll pop down to age just by typing in AGE. I'll add average opinion, which is down here. And there's really no other options I need because these are two continuous variables. And so a Pearson correlation is appropriate. I could determine whether I'm going to be running a significance test, which is two tailed or one tailed. Unless I have a directional hypothesis, we should always be running a two tailed test. I'll also leave the default, which is to flag significant correlations. When we have a larger correlation matrix, which I'll show you as well, it's really useful to have little stars to tell us which correlations are significant. So that's it. I'm going to hit OK and we're going to see what we get. So what we see here is a simple correlation table between two variables. What's worth pointing out is this is symmetrical. If I draw a line down the diagonal right here and I flip this over, this value will map onto this value. This is not two different correlations. This is the same correlation reported two ways. Age relative to average opinion and average opinion relative to age. Those are the exact same thing. As a quick reminder, correlation can take the value between negative one and positive one, where zero indicates no correlation or no relationship between the two variables. And a positive correlation indicates a positive relationship, meaning that as one variable increases in value, the other variable also tends to increase in value. And of course, the opposite, which is a negative correlation, is that as one variable increases in value, the other one tends to decrease in value. The greater those values are moving away from zero, so very close to negative one or very close to one, the stronger is the relationship. So what is the correlation? Well, in this case, it's 0 0.054. However, that is not a statistically significant correlation. And we know that because of our significance level denoted right here of 0.09 is above our conventional threshold of 0.05, meaning we cannot reject the null hypothesis, which in this case is that the correlation is zero. So that's the simplest version of a correlation. Let's make this table a little bit more interesting. We're going to add one more variable. We'll go up to analyze, correlate, bivariate. And I'm actually going to add this variable called channels subscribed. This is a count of the number of channels that a person has subscribed to on their YouTube account. I'll move that over here and I'll leave everything else intact because again, these are all linear variables, which means a Pearson correlation is appropriate. We'll hit OK. And now we see this table is a lot more interesting. Now there's three variables. Though again, if I were to draw a line down this diagonal right here, and fold it over, I have the same correlations reported twice. There's actually only three correlations here despite you know six values displayed. I also fail to mention that the diagonal is always going to be one because a variable correlated with itself is always one. And so now we see some more interesting results. We see that age is negatively correlated with the number of channels subscribed, negative 0.172, and that is significant because that value there is well below our threshold of 0.05. And that's further denoted by these two little asterisks. And you can know what those mean if you look down at this footnote. It says two asterisks means that the correlation is significant at the 0.01 level. We also see that average opinion is correlated with the number of channels subscribed at 0.12. And we see that age is negatively correlated with channel subscriptions, negative 0.172. And those are all statistically significant correlations. And the more variables we add to this table, the larger it grows. So let me just show you that quickly under analyze, correlate, bivariate. I could add a whole bunch of other variables. So let's add all of these importance measures. You could put as many variables as you want in here. Again, these are all continuous variables. So a Pearson correlation is fine. And now we see this gigantic table, which is a bit of a mess to read, but that's where those stars come in. So if you're really kind of just exploring your data and not trying to make any specific conclusions, you can look for the stars to see where there are significant correlations. And then you simply would look across and up to understand what that correlation actually is. This is all well and good if we have continuous variables, but very often we have categorical variables. So let me show you some examples of that. If we scroll to the top, we see that this variable minute watched, which is how many minutes somebody watches YouTube in a given day, is actually collected on a categorical scale. These buckets, right? Zero minutes, one to 30 minutes, 31 to 60 minutes, and so on. So this is not a continuous variable. It is an ordinal variable, in fact. The higher in the scale we go, the more minutes watched, but it is not continuous. 
we could not use this with a Pearson correlation because Pearson correlation requires continuous data. In fact, if we wanted to correlate this with another categorical variable, like for instance, education level, which is right here, and it is measured as one is less than high school education, two is high school, three is high school graduate, four is college student, and so on. We couldn't do that with our standard Pearson correlation, but we could do it with our other two types of correlations, the Spearman and the Kendall's Taub B. Those correlations allow us to test ordinal variables. Those are non-parametric tests that allow us to compare the relationship between ordinal variables, which these are. So if we wanted to know if those two are related, we'd have to run that type of test. Let's see what that would look like. Again, under Analyze, Correlate by Variant, we'll get rid of all this stuff. In fact, I'll hit Reset just to get rid of all of it. And I'll just put in min is washed and education. And rather than ask for the Pearson correlation, which is no longer appropriate here, I will ask for both the Kendall's Tau and the Spearman. There are differences between the two. Spearman by far is the most common, though there's an argument to be made that Kendall's Tau B correlation is a little bit more robust to smaller sample sizes. That's really not an issue here because we have a lot of data. So let's see what this looks like. We'll hit OK. And now, by the way, this is labeled non-parametric correlations. And we see that this table is now split into two parts. The top is the Kendall Tau B, and the bottom is the Spearman's correlation. They're both negative. They're both significant, though you can see that the point estimates are slightly different. This one's negative 0.112, and this one's negative 0.134. Neither one is necessarily correct. They're just different ways to estimate these relationships using slightly different assumptions. This is the point of the video where I'm going to ask you to pause and actually try this yourself. And in particular, what I'll ask you to do is conduct a Pearson correlation for all of the big five inventory questions. So there's 15 items in all big five, one through big five, 15. Some of them have an R to denote that the interpretation is reverse coded. And I want you to go ahead and run a correlation table so that you can see what all 15 of those look like. Go ahead and pause the video, give it a try, and I will do it when you return. So hopefully you've gone ahead and done that. Uh, I will do it right now as well. So under Analyze, Correlate, Bivariate, I'll reset my table so we start from scratch. And so now what I'll do is I will select all of those items, the Big 5 1 through Big 5 15. I will put them over here in the variables table, and I don't actually have to change any other options because these are continuous variables, so a Pearson correlation is appropriate. I'll hit OK, and I get my matrix right here. There's a lot going on. So what you can see right away with the asterisks are the variables that are correlated. And in particular, I've labeled these so that you can see which variables are part of which of the big five personality traits. So N is narcissism. So we see that our three variables right here, narcissism, they're actually all very correlated with one another. And that is what we would expect if this were a valid scale, which it is. E here is extroversion. So we can see that the two extroversion items, which are right here, are also very well correlated. And I'm not going to go through all of these because that would just be a bit laborious, but you can. And you can see that the items that are meant to be correlated with one another, in fact, are. There's a way to automatically extract this, which is factor analysis, and that is a topic that I'll cover in a different video. But under the hood, factor analysis is actually just doing lots of different correlations and weighing them in a very specific way. If that's something of interest to you, have a look at that video. So correlations are one of our fundamental tools for understanding if two variables are related to one another. We use a Pearson correlation when those variables are linear and continuous, and we can use a Spearman or a kendall taus B correlation when those variables are ordinal in nature. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.